Fast API Basics. In this video, I'm going to cover the code in detail, step by step. If you have not seen the earlier videos, I would suggest you to see them before continuing with this one, as this tutorial series builds on the previous one. Now, let us get back to the sample code that we wrote in our previous video. In the first line, we are importing the UVCon, which is only required since we are starting the application from within the code. Else, we could do away with the line 1 and the code in line 13 and 14. And the second one is where the actual code begins. So here, we are saying from Fast API, import this module. Okay. Fast API is a Python class that provides all the functionality for our API. Fast API class inherits directly from Starlet and you can use all the Starlet functionality with Fast API too. So that is what this particular line does. The next one is we are creating an instance of Fast API. So here this is a variable which we are using and then the Fast API is the class which we are creating and I am passing an argument here saying that debug is equal to true so that I can get debug information whenever I am running the application. Which this part of the code is not required when I am pushing this code to the production environment. We need to remove this and then move it. If you remember in our previous video we executed this application directly from the console. In the console what we did? This is the code that we wrote. Here this part of the argument 002 refers to the module or the same which is the same as the file name okay and this app whatever you are seeing here is this name the variable name that we are using here if you give it something as my app then here you will be calling the same thing when you, if you have to execute it you will you will be calling it as my app and that is how you have to run it so this changes in all the areas so we let us go back and stick on to whatever we did earlier and then this command here what we are doing is there are multiple things that is involved here one is the path is involved the operation is involved and this is again a decorator this forward slash is what we refer to as path Path here refers to the last part of the URL starting from the first slash. So if we go back to the browser, you can see this is the URL what we have typed. Okay. And then the last part after the port, this slash, which is optional, is what we call as path. So here we have not specified anything after the slash. So this will do and it will work and it will give us the JSON response. A path is also commonly called as an endpoint or a route. When building an API, the path is the main way to separate the concerns and the resources. So in our URL, like the first slash is our root. This is when I say root, don't confuse with the method name that I have given it here. So this can be anything. Okay, I can name it as index, I can name it as home or I can name it as ABC, I can name it anything I, I would want. Now if we have another function, okay, if I go ahead and create another function below this. Now if you see, there is another function that I have copied here. And this function, the path is slash and home. And this slash and home says that this is a path for this. Now. Just because I have given the name as home, it's not necessary. So I'll change it here as, so this is a fu function. But URL to call this particular function will be after this, I'm going to say slash home. Now we get a JSON response saying home page, which is actually calling the URL. This is what it is. Then the next part of this line is the operation. Operation here refers to one of the HTTP methods. There are many HTTP methods. The common ones are 
post, get, delete, put. But there are a few more, some of them like options, head, patch, etc. We are going to mainly concentrate on the first four, the post, get, put and delete. In the HTTP protocol, you can communicate to each path using one or more of these operations. When building APIs, you normally use these specific HTTP methods to perform a specific action. Normally, you use POST to create data, PUT to update the data, GET to read the data and DELETE to delete the data. So in OpenAPI, each of these HTTP methods is called as an operation. When I define a path operation function, this is how we do this. I'm going to add this at the rate, which is the directive, and say use this app. This app is nothing but the variable that I've used here. And then after the dot, I'm going to use get or one of HTTP methods. And within the brackets, I'm going to give slash home, which is my path or route. This is what we call as a decorator. The at something syntax in Python is called a decorator. This sits above the function. So now this is where the function starts and the decorator sits just above the function. A decorator takes the function below and adds some features to it. Now, if I have given the decorator over here, this decorator will add some features to this function which for which we, have, we need not write any code. It automatically gets it through this decorator. This decorator tells the fast API that the function below corresponds to the path slash with an operator get. Instead of get, we can also use it as app dot post and put or anything else. However, I would want to inform you that you are free to choose whichever HTTP method that you would wish for. It's not necessary that even for getting the data, I should always use only the get method. I can use post for everything from insert, update, delete, read. It's not going to fail. It is just a guideline and not a requirement. Here, for this path, we are defining a function or creating a function. I'm using the keyword async and then def as usual and then giving a name of the function colon. So this is where I am actually defining the function. This is simply a Python function. It will be called by fast API whenever it receives a request to this path using the get operation. If I pass the same method using the post operation, it will fail. Let me show you through Postman. This is an application for uh, sending and uh, uh, sending requests to APIs and getting the information. So let me go ahead. Instead of browser, I'll use this. Now I'm going to make a GET request for this URL. I'm not going to pass any parameters. Click send to send the request. I get back a response which you saw in the browser. Instead of using GET if I use post and send it, I get back an error which says method not allowed. This is the error that we get which says that the method is not allowed to call this particular path. The reason being we have declared it here to be called with get. In the coming videos, you'll see how we can go ahead and define different paths and different HTTP operators for the same method. We'll, we'll look into that later on. For now, it only works with a get method for this path. I can also define the same function without this async keyword. Hopefully, I believe you all are aware about the difference between async and not using it. If not, it's better you check out some documents. In short, Async refers to asynchronous code, which is just a way of telling the computer that or the program that at some point in the code, it will have to wait for something which is a wrong, long running process. And it has the computer has to wait until it finishes that work. And during that time, 
we are actually telling the computer to go ahead and do some other work and come back later on when the work is done. So that is what is about async. So, but for creating a fast API, async is not required, but I suggest you go with that. Now, the next part in the code is this particular line where I'm just returning a message. The message is it's a JSON object and I'm, I'm returning a message called hello world. Okay, you can return a string, an integer or any other data type, a dictionary, a list. You can return anything. You can also return pedantic models which you'll see in the coming videos. There are many other objects and models that will be automatically converted to JSON including ORMs etc. And finally it's about running our application. If you open the code this is how we are going to run the application wherein I'm going to use the UVicon which is the server and this is the module. This is the app the variable that we use to create a fast API instance. Hope I was clear in explaining the code that we wrote in our earlier video. To recap, we need to start with importing the fast API, then create a variable, use a decorator with a path and a HTTP method, and then create a normal Python function. If required, use async. This is all is required for us to create a fast API based application. And then to run it, a simple command from the terminal, uvicon, the module, the app, in the next video, we'll look into path parameters in detail. That's it for now. Thank you. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel. And do like this video. Thank you.